studied all the pictures, magazines, and books. I memorized the subway map too. It's one block north to Macy's and two to Brothers Brooks. Manhattan, I prepared for you. You certainly are different from what they have back home. Nothing's over three stories high And no one's in a hurry or wants to roam But I do, though they wonder why They said I would soon be good and lonely They said I would sing the homesick blues So I always have this ticket in my pocket to get home in my pocket to do with as I choose. Burn the bridge, bet the store, baby's coming home no more. Not for the life of me. Break the lock, post my bail, done my time, I'm out of jail. Not for the life of me. Honey, 
You're mine, your core story. It's every penny I have! Look, I feel for you. I really do. But girls like you arrive here every day. So full of dreams, you may as well be sleepwalking. Well, now that you're awake, I'm curious. Have you even got a place to stay? No, but... Any friends or family nearby? No, but... And you don't have a job? No, but... No buts. You ain't got nothing. Relax. It's my good deed for the decade. Then I hate to see a bad one, because you're really not helping. The Hotel Priscilla? A boarding house around the corner. And I can't help thinking, if I were in your shoe, I'd check myself in, get a good night's sleep, and then first thing in the morning, wire home for train fare. Your folks would be only too glad to send it, and you may not believe me now, but once you get back to Keokuk or Gopherville... Salina, Kansas. And who are you, the unwelcome wagon? That's me. So go home, country mouse, because once you get there, you'll be saying, Well, I had my big adventure, but it sure is good to be back in my own bed. Good luck. <laughs> I ain't got nothing. So, I ain't got nothing to lose. Who needs a hat? Who needs a person? And who needs you, Mr. Whoever you are? Because I'm a pioneer, I'm a pal. The whole world building, the men like tower. There's ghosts in my hills, and I'm gonna get it or die trying. Stands up, you kind and gentle. Ask me if I'm sentimental. Not for the
know Liz knew it. We said to them, no, but I haven't found a job. You had two minutes to pack your things. You found it was straight, but music means meals to you. You have one week of credit, now time to run out! Excuse me, I'd like to inquire about the room for rent. Trust me, you don't want to stay here. The manager's mean, the rooms are hot, the water, always cold. Perfect. Look, there's only one room available and it's mine, so unless you want a roommate... All my heart. I was kidding. Although, you need the room and I need the rent. It's a single bed. I'll take the floor. What's your angle, sister? You want the low life, but I see the rents written all over you. Then help me be rewritten. I'm here to learn how the other half lives. And I'm here to tell you, not very well. You <laughs> really have friends, don't you? Soulmates, not just sports and carrot ponies who only want you for your money. So, you take my half and I'll take yours. Sass Fifth Avenue. Bergdorf Goodman. In fact, we could be very good for each other. I'll teach you how to eat on a nickel. And I'll show you what fork to use. I'll teach you how to stretch a dollar. And I'll show you how to invest one. I'm on the way up. I'm on my way down. It's a good thing we met in the middle. Oh, my very first poor person. <laughs> I'm broke, not poor. <laughs> and how poor? Sounds permanent, but broke can be fixed. I have a plan so far ahead of its time. It's almost too bold, too daring, too new woman. I'm gonna marry my boss. When? I don't know. I haven't got one yet. <laughs> it has nothing to do with it. Don't you read Vogue? This month's issue clearly states that the modern marriage is a business arrangement. Love comes later, occasionally with the man that you're actually married to. Where will you find him? The classifieds. I've been interviewing boss after boss, and so far, married, married, engaged, single, and I can see why. Don't you read the tabloids? Manhattan's most eligible bachelors, all of whom need wives. And one of whom must need a sit-on. Mary! <sighs> Who's your friend? <laughs> oh, we haven't met. Millie Dillmount. Miss Dorothy Brown from California. An actress, are you? How did you guess? I have a keen eye for talent. <laughs> <laughs> now what can I do for you, Dorothy? Uh, Miss Dorothy. She's gonna bump with me until I find him a suitable boss and pay the rent. Still and Mary, I thought you another week. <laughs> and as luck would have it, a nice sunny room just become available right next to Mary. <laughs> you mean two away? But Ethel P is- Ethel P just checked out. <laughs> But she only just checked in. Yeah, she'll be. <laughs> Not right this way. You check in, Dorothy. I mean, Miss Dorothy. <laughs> Miss and Mary, always good for you. Mary has such a big warm family. Do you have such a big warm family, Miss Dorothy? Second floor, dear. This way, Miss Dorothy. And other half lesson number one. The girls used to practice their routines in here, on a cup of hardwood flooring. I think it did something to the machinery. Now you have to tap dance to get this thing going. Bon food. 
the film should have a warning Since the only possibility is that your wax is rancid I request a full refund of all the money we've advanced And unless you can convince me you've improved the floor wax batter We will take our business elsewhere So I hope you solve this matter How's my speed, Miss Silma? A little slow, perhaps. Enclosed, you'll find a small container of the stuff I talk about. Just carefully remove the lid and take a whiff if you have a doubt. I'm sure you wouldn't want me to alert the daily papers with the news of how our office was affected by the papers. Which is why I choose to write to you a confidential letter full of strong recommendations that you make your floor wax better. I just hope it won't require us to have our floor relayed. And if it does, you may expect a bill. Sincerely, Trevor Graydon. Have that letter on my desk in two minutes flat. Manual machines. Go. Place is 
please. For you, Maria saying, welcome to the Priscilla. A California apple? For a California orphan. <laughs> Thank you. Take a bite. escorted by a member. Well? What are you, nuts? I got a girl waiting there for me. Please, sir, for me. Tell her where your kids Come on, introduce us to some boys. Please, <laughs> Think of it as next decade's good deed. All right, but the moment we're in, you're on your own. Question? What? Your name? Millie Dillman. 
Jimmy Smith. Put a sock in it, why don't you? Yeah, how's a bum supposed to enjoy a free bed with you two yapping all night? <laughs> Good night. Good night, Mama. All the places I would like to show you Although I hardly know you I have a funny feeling We make a perfect pair Besides I want to see you see him The nights of you that me Me, you, we Wait a minute! Just a minute! No, 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 no! I'm a Joe with just one aim Every night's get a different day Call each one from the same pet name Hey baby In a row I have my dust Loads of yachts, give me loads of yachts Leave the crew into the other clubs I don't mean baby Got it good, what do I need with love? What I preach Temptation out of easy reach Stick to dolls, wash the hair and bleach I'm happy Come and go the way I choose Never gonna sing the tie down blues Other guys gonna fill my shoes Got my wing, clip, sappy Got it good, what do I need for love? That was a near miss Talk about a close shade Good with disaster There must be someone up there watching over me Talk about a four-leaf clover me Be right, missing footsie Means you rolled out of the tea That is good What do you need with love? I got it good What do I need with love? Skip the vows and all that rot Tell the minister that I do not Tickets to this afternoon's game. When I play hooky, we'll make a day of it. No, can do. You don't know my fiance. Fiance? Boss. And fiance. I'm going to marry him. Wow. Love at first sight? Not for the modern. She takes charge of her destiny. No more waiting at port for my ship to come in. I went out and found him. Trevor Graydon the third. Sounds like a stiff. Some may say so, but I see a side of him that few people are lucky enough to see. While you're sitting in his lap? I've only been there a day! Has he kissed you yet? No. Does he have a pet name for you? Yes! What? John. John. <laughs> That's not very romantic. But it's modern! He calls me John because I'm so efficient. Johnny on the spot. Sweet! 
Maybe you can work it into the vows. I, Trevor Graydon, take you, John, to be my lawfully wedded skinnock. Well, if you're going to be old-fashioned about it, I'll keep my plans to myself. Hey, you want to marry a man who thinks he's you with a typewriter on legs? Be my guest. Thank you, I will. The new woman chooses reasonable romance any day of the week. And I'm a new woman. Marrying for money's the oldest trick in the book. It beats marrying for paper clips. Then maybe we shouldn't see each other again. What do I care? Any day now my time will be consumed by my boss slash fiancé, Mr. Trevor Graydon, the third. So fly away, butterfly boy. Flower to flower to flower. Have you got a problem with that? I'm just suggesting maybe you grow up, skirt chaser. Gold digger. Womanizer. Jezebel. Casanova. <laughs>
times before I finally had to answer it myself. Not pleased, not at all pleased. Where's Flannery? Back to work! <laughs> you at the office. More research on how the other half lives. Oh, Millie, I feel so dirty. He had this peculiar grin on his face as he went to shake my hand, only it wasn't my hand he wanted to shake. He, he, he pounds. My knees buckled. No wonder you couldn't stop him. And as far as you knew, I was going to marry my boss. You mean you aren't? I most certainly am. Perfect, but what does that have to do with my audition for David Belasco? Oh, that's right, the big audition. How did it go? Fine, until he... he pounced. Do I look like the sort of girl who would allow a man to take liberties? You look helpless, so they think they can get away with this. Well, take a lesson from my book, Miss Dorothy. Count us up! Higher heels, shorter skirts, and you're not gonna like this. Cut your hair. Cut my hair? No time like the present, Miss Dorothy. John, be a good old scout and ring up my handball court. Reserve a court for 615, will you? Yes, sir. Ought to work up a good sweat. Had you in the gut, tied in the. Oh, sweet. So oh, Miss Dorothy, I'm going to take you to dinner and try and dissuade you from robbing mankind of those adorable curls. May I take the liberty of asking you to dine? Perfect. Uh, Millie, I think I'll keep my curls, at least until tonight. I'm going to find a suitable frock for this evening. Till tonight, Mr. Graydon? Trevor. Trevor. <laughs> that Miss Dorothy, great Scott, that Miss Dorothy. Pretty as a peach and skin to beat the band. Perfect little Pippin. What a dandy little bundle for a fellow to cuddle. <laughs> Say, imagine all that sweet softness in your arms. Yes, well, call and make reservations at the plaza, the candle nook room, quiet corner table for two. I think Miss Dorothy's for the plaza, don't you? And John, flowers. There's a florist around the corner from the hotel. I'll, I'll get it from them. That's using the old bean. Roses, two dozen. Two dozen. Long stemmed. Long stemmed. Plump. On the fat side. <laughs> Millie, up here. Jimmy? We have to talk about what happened. Well, in case you can get the message from my slamming the phone in your ear, but no mood for this. It's been a rough day. I agree, so let's kiss and make up. Or at least make up. Maybe the kissing wasn't such a good idea. Or maybe you prefer kissing Miss Dorothy. I saw you leaving her room. What did you think we were doing? Gee, I can't imagine. <laughs> Not that I need to. She told me everything. Then you got your wires crossed. Yes, I went to her. I had to talk to somebody. An intimate conversation from the looks of it. As a matter of fact, it was. I've been so confused, Millie. So mixed up. Ever since you tripped me, life's been topsy-turvy. Like now, for instance. What am I doing on a window ledge? Hundreds of feet in the air. A uh, great question. Can you answer it inside, Jimmy? No thanks. I like the view. <laughs> Dozens of buses, hundreds of cabs, thousands of people way down below, wandering to and fro. Tired of these people, no time to lose. Crowding the avenue, on the bus, racing fast, quite a car. Pick any two, they can be just like you and You say, we're the stranger's land. I turned the corner, stopped on a dime. Like I remembered someone long forgotten. Your mere 
Dripping in emeralds, you're better off on a bicycle, provided it's still for two. But this is why I left Kansas to get away from, and look at me now. The truth isn't so crazy about you, it almost seems fun. <laughs> then let the fun continue. Marry me, Millie. Who needs emeralds? We can make it on green glass. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Where are you going? Find a new boss? No, I mean, yes, I mean, I don't know. Millie! Okay. Life is a holiday, I'm talking to you.
you doing? You're supposed to be at the candlelit room with Miss Dorothy. She stood me up. How very strange. There you are. Jimmy, you've got to hear this. Go on, Mr. Graydon. Well, I went to the Hotel Priscilla to call on Miss Dorothy and the lady at the front desk. Mrs. Mears? Said that she was gone. She checked out. No note. No forwarding address. Something is very wrong. You suspect foul play, sir. She wouldn't leave without telling anybody. Ethel Pease did. And another girl when I first moved in. They were here only one day and then gone the next without a word to anyone. Except Mrs. Mears. <laughs> so to be all alone in the world. How's that? Mrs. Mears is always saying that. You don't think. I do. You don't mean. White slavery! <sighs> Cruel but true. If a girl is all alone in the world and suddenly checks out, then who's to question her fate? I'm calling the police. Not so fast. Anything that may arouse Mrs. Mears' suspicion could mean an end to Miss Dorothy. Then what we need is a temporary orphan. Someone who's willing to put themselves in harm's way. I do it myself, but she knows me. And Graydon, I don't think you or I would pass as a new girl in town. But I know someone who would. Flannery! <laughs> Hey, Buddha, this is Butterfly. I got one for ya. 
price to sell? Two fifty. But I got right back to two twenty-five. A little longer than the tooth, but uh, in a dark, dark corner on the late, late shift at Mary Star Shop, no one's gonna notice. Well, if anyone complains, you get your money back. The tip is enough the next one that I kidnap. But I believe that. Give that back to me, please. Hi, Buddha. This is Butterfly. I got one for you, Princess Ellis. It's 150 fairy tale. Let's say 225. I'll give a long and shimmer shimmer. There's a dark corner. Word of your submission plus the sin of illumination. Uh, oh, so you were eavesdropping on me, huh? Inadmissible. PSA, where's your proof, huh? Hong Kong! Buddha get girl, Miss get cash, buy $600, $1,000 for Miss Dorothy! Do you ever want to see your mama again? You liar! You're not playing Ama over! My ear is better than your Chinese! <laughs> it's over, Mix. Unless you hand over Miss Story. Where, Where is she? I would die for you, Miss Dorothy. Oh, I love that. <laughs> you all right? Tell us what happened. I hate to interrupt, folks, but music here's got an audition downtown at the police headquarters. Thank you, Miss Flannery. Peg. Peg. Come on, Mirzy. Say the yellow road in the wood. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so, where were we? Before we were interrupted by kidnapping, white slave trading, and the like. Oh yeah. Will you marry me, Millie? I'll marry you. Poor as I am? Poor as you are, because if marriage is what I have in mind, love has everything to do with it. Hallelujah! Now it's off with the mask. Mask? I'm James Herbert, Van Hosmer III. First Vice President of Van Hosmer Worldwide Enterprises, second largest company in the planet. So, the circle line, the paper clips, it was all a lie? That's not completely false, Millie. The fortune was founded in steel. Miss Dorothy, you're in on this too? I'm his sister. Miss Dorothy Carnegie Mellon Vanderbilt Van Hosmere. <laughs> you see, every fortune hunter in this hemisphere is after Dorothy. And James here was squandering all of his time and money on the wrong kind of women. So our mother sent us out to the real world. With $25 each. In hopes that they'd come back with truly, truly sweet partners. And we have. So, I'm guessing you already have a stenog. <laughs> Several hundred, actually. You included, John. Von Hosmere Worldwide Enterprises owns the Sincere Trust Insurance Company. I knew I recognized you, sir. Congratulations, John. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see, Millie, you can't marry your boss after all. Who cares? I found myself a green glass love. Funny. <laughs> I found myself a green glass Have you seen the way it gets in the movie? It's a bit delectable. Stenog? I've had 50 words a minute. 